There was once a great city, a beautiful city, where the sun shone all day, the rain fell at night, and it only ever snowed on Christmas Day. And the people of the city could have whatever they wanted, and as much as they wanted, and they had plenty of time to enjoy the wonderful things they had, because all the work was done by machines. Machines sowed the seeds and harvested the wheat, milled the flour and baked the bread. Machines wove the cloth and sewed the suits. Machines quarried the stone and built the houses. The people of the city didn't ask how the machines worked. Huh, they didn't care. They didn't know that deep underground Beneath each machine was a tiny wheel, and that these millions of tiny wheels were connected to thousands of middle-sized wheels, and the middle-sized wheels were connected to hundreds of larger wheels, and the larger wheels were connected to one big wheel. The people of the city did know about the big wheel, because the very tip of it rose above the centre of the great city, and they could watch it turn in day and night and never stop him. And they knew to keep the big wheel turning, they had to feed it. So, into a large deep hole next to the wheel, they tipped all their uneaten food, unwanted clothes and broken furniture. As long as they fed the wheel, it would turn and the machines would work. Or so they thought. But what the people of the great city didn't know was that underground, amongst the wheels, cogs and pistons, was another city. A dark, damp city where the sun never shone, rain never fell, and it was never Christmas. The people of this city worked day and night to keep the big wheel turning. They spent every hour of every day stoking boilers, oiling chains and greasing axles. They knew as long as the big wheel kept turning, food, clothes and broken furniture would fall from the hole in the sky. As long as the wheel turned, they would always have something to eat, wear or burn. Or so they thought. So life continued, with neither side knowing about the other, and both relying on the wheel for all they owned. Then one day something happened to change everything. Something very small. A young girl, playing in the sun, lost a marble. It rolled out of her hand and threw a crack in the floor. then bounced and tumbled all the way down to the underground city. The girl who lost the marble didn't mind. She had hundreds and could get as many as she wanted whenever she wanted. But the boy who found the marble in the muddy streets of the dark, damp city thought it was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. The dirty-faced boy couldn't take his eyes off the shiny glass marble as he walked through the smoky streets past the roaring boilers. Then he slipped the marble into his pocket, but thought about it all the time as he climbed the slippery wet ladder that took him to the very centre of the big wheel. There, a ragged girl handed him a large greasy brush. Before she started down the ladder, he had just come up. When she'd gone, the boy took the marble from his pocket, sat quite still, and stared, and stared, and stared at it. He stared so much that he forgot about the brush in his hand. Worse still, he forgot to dip the brush into the bucket of grease by his side. But worst of all, he forgot to rub the greasy brush onto the axle of the big wheel. So the axle dried, the wheel turned slower and slower, and then for the first time since it started, it stopped. It didn't take long for the people who lived in the sunlight to realise the wheel had stopped. And soon the whole city was gathered around the hole by the wheel, throwing down everything they could find in the hope the wheel would begin turning. But the longer it remained still, the more worried the people became. What had happened? Why did it stop? How could they get it started? Eventually, they decided the wheel had stopped because the hole was blocked. So they joined together a hundred ladders and climbed down the deep dark hole. And that is when the people who worked on the wheel first met the people of the great city above. At first they were very curious to see people coming down from the hole in the sky. 
but their curiosity soon turned to anger when they realised that all their hard work underground allowed the city people to live a wonderful life in the sun. They wanted some of the good things the machines made. But the people of the great city didn't want to give up their nice lives to work underground. They wanted things to remain as they were. All day, they argued, but still they couldn't agree. So the people of the great city climbed back up the hundred ladders, leaving the war workers alone underground. Now that the people of the two cities knew about each other, they became scared and suspicious. They will climb up the hole and take our machines from us, said the people of the great city. They will come back down and take the wheel from us, said the people of the underground city. Unknown to each other, they both decided to destroy the things they had, so the others couldn't take them. And that night, the underground people and the city people armed themselves with hammers and axes. And by the morning, all the machines, little wheels, middle-sized wheels, large wheels, and even the big wheel itself, were smashed into a thousand pieces. As time passed, and with nothing left to fight over, the two cities became one, and although they did their best to grow food, weed cloth and quarry stone, people were hungry, clothes turned to rags, houses crumbled, and things were never as good again. It probably seems silly to you that the people of the two cities would rather destroy the wonderful wheel than share it. But although this thought saddens me, it doesn't really surprise me.